here's a real life problem that you might want to consider running a simulation for. Um, you want to sell 150 gallon fish tanks. You have a pet shop and you know, you sell smaller fish tanks too, but they're, they're these really big ones. Um, they're pretty profitable. So you want to have them in stock in case someone comes in. Uh, but they also take up a ton of shelf space because they're huge. On average, you sell one per week. And uh, when, once you order one, it takes five days to arrive. So the question is, how should you stock these in order to maximize your profit and not take up too much shelf space? Um, so one option is just to order one each time one is sold. Um, sell one, order it, it takes five days to come in. Uh, problem with that, obviously, if someone comes in three days later, they want one, um, you tell them you don't have one here, maybe they're willing to, to order one and, and come back and pick it up later, but maybe they'll just go somewhere else, you lose their business. Uh, you might lose their future business if they also buy other supplies from another place where they find a tank. Um, option two, uh, you could just order one once a week, regardless of whether you sold one. Um, they might pile up, uh, but you're more likely to have one if a customer comes in. Okay, so you start with these simple options. And when modeling, it's always good to start with simple options. Um, if you try to come up with the most realistic model um, or the best possible solution right away, um, you're going to run into a lot of problems uh, with complexity if you're programming a simulation especially um, uh, or if you're actually doing a math calculation by hand too um, it'll just be too difficult okay so you run these two simple options um, see which one's more pro profitable and uh, as expected uh, on the first one you lose a lot of customers um, and on the second one uh, sometimes you have the tanks build up and actually one problem there is if you start building up a backlog let's say you have five tanks already but on average, you sell one a week, um, you keep ordering new ones, you're probably going to have about five for a while, unless you get a week with three customers or something crazy. Um, okay, so you start doing hybrid approaches. Uh, maybe you'll order one every nine or ten days, uh, and then also order one if you run out. Um, that's a hybrid of the two approaches. Um, or maybe you'll order one once a week, unless you already have two in stock and maybe you'll skip a week or, or unless you already have three in stock or maybe you'll do a hybrid of those order one once a week unless you already have two in stock and also order one when you run out um then you start to run more complicated simulations um you have to run them pretty high like maybe for um you know thousands uh of days um so you simulate you know 10,000 days in the store um, and see which one's more profitable. Um, a couple things with this. Uh, so to see whether a customer comes in on a given day, um, you might want to use a random number generator on a computer. Um, so some languages, uh, you'll be able to get a random integer. Some languages, uh, I believe you can get a random number just between zero and one. Um, if you can do that, if that number is less than one seventh, that means there's a customer because you get an average of one customer per week, seven days in a week. Um, this doesn't account for the possibility you might get two customers in a day. Or if you're not selling these fish tanks anymore, you're selling something um, much more common, uh, like let's say apples. Um, lots of people buy apples in a store in a day. Um, you have a larger number. You might have 50 people buying apples in a day. Um, now you can't do this random number generator as effectively. In fact, what is the distribution? Like, are you more likely to have one customer than uh, 100 customers if on average you have 50 customers a day? We don't know. So Poisson distribution answers this question. So to me, anytime you can do math instead of running a simulation, it's better. Also more interesting. Okay, so let's say you are looking at average of A customers per day. A might be very large, A might be 100, A might be 1,000. Depends on what you're selling, what store you're in. Um, the strategy here is we're going to be divide, dividing the day into N equal chunks. You know, down to like hours, minutes, seconds maybe. Um, and as n gets big, um, this will approximate what we're looking for. Okay, 
So what happens? Let's let's just do a, a little example where n equals three. Um, and then the probability that you have a customer, so a is hopefully small here. A is going to be smaller than n in general. So so let's just say um, a is actually one. Uh, on average, you get one customer per day. Then the probability on each of those chunks that you get a customer is one third. In general, a over n. Okay. Um, then what is the probability of zero customers? Okay, probability of having a customer is p, so probability of not having a customer in each chunk is 1 minus p, and the probability of having zero customers all day is going to be 1 minus p for each of the three chunks. And those are independent, so we will multiply. So we get 1 minus p cubed. What is the probability of having one customer all day? Um, well, you have two chunks with one minus p with no customers and one chunk with a customer. Okay, um, but this chunk with a customer could be any of the three chunks. You could have, uh, let's put c for, uh, no, let's put check for customer and x for no customer. So you have customer, customer, no customer, customer, no customer, customer, or no customer, customer, customer. There's three possibilities there. Okay, so we're going to multiply that by three. Probability of two customers, pretty similar. You'll have one chunk with no customers, two chunks with customers. We're eventually going to let n be large enough that you won't have two customers in the same chunk, so we're okay. Um, and same thing, we'll multiply by 3, because now it'll be the same pattern except check x, x, three different ways to arrange that. And then finally, the probability of three customers, your total customers will never be more than n, but if n is large, this won't be an issue, is just p cubed, and that's check, 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 so only one way to arrange that. Okay, so what is that in general? where n is any number, well, same thing. It's, uh, this is now 1 minus p. All the chunks have no customers, so to get 0 customers is 1 minus p to the n. To get 1 customer, 1 minus p to the n minus 1 times p times, and then this x can go in any of n spots, or I'm going to write n choose 1. We talked a little bit about choosing in last week's lectures. We're going to choose one spot for the x. This is zero customers, one customer, two customers, one minus p to the n minus two, two chunks of customers, and then we're going to pick the number of ways to pick those are n choose two. That's the number of ways to arrange the checks and the x's, and so on. Okay, so let's look at what happens as n gets large, and remember our p Okay, so over here, p was one-third. In general, p is a over n. Average number of customers per day divided by number of chunks. That's the probability of having a customer in a chunk. Okay, so one minus p is a over n. And then that's to the power of n. And then this is actually a definition. Uh, remember, hopefully you saw this in calculus. Uh, limit as... We're going to do little n. This is how they usually show it in calculus. Uh, 1 plus x over n to the power of n. As n gets big, that is a definition for e to the x. There's a lot of equivalent definitions. So this is recall that from calculus. Um, that means this. We have a minus instead of a plus, so this is e to the negative a. Okay, cool. So if you expect a customers per day, we have a mathematical answer for this now. Um, the probability of having no customers is e to the negative a. This is zero customers. We've mathematically proved this. We did not need a computer simulation. Okay, what about one customer? Okay, now we need one minus a over n. This is the one minus p to the n minus one 
times P is A over N times N choose 1. Well, N choose 1 is just N, so those cancel. And then, let's see, as N gets big, N minus 1 gets big at about the same rate. We can make this more rigorous. Um, but that's still E to the negative A. And then we have an A. So this is A times E to the negative A. Okay, limit, this is probability of one customer. Yeah, and we've, we've shown this mathematically. If your chunks are small, it uh, doesn't matter. Okay, let's do one more. One minus P is A over N to the N minus 2. And then we have A over N to the 2. N choose 2 is N times N minus 1 over 2. It's n factorial, and then the n minus 2 factorial cancels with the rest. So that's all you're left with. Um, okay, so that's about the same size as n squared, so those roughly cancel in the limit, and we can make that more rigorous. We have an a squared. n and n minus 2 are still about the same size if n is really big. Um, okay, so this is a squared over 2 times e to the negative a. And then this pattern continues. So this, this will uh, remain here. This numerator of the n choose k will cancel, usually with this guy. This a to some power will remain. So the probability, this is two customers, of k customers is going to be a to the k, continuing in this pattern, we're going to get a k factorial, this guy was really 2 factorial, times e to the negative a. And let's just check that that checks out. Let's add all these up. e to the, sorry, e to the negative a plus a times e to the negative a plus a squared over 2 factorial times e to the negative a and so on. Well, what is that? That's e to the, factor out an e to the negative a. And then we see another definition for E. Imagine that. I'll put one more term here. Here's your other definition for E to the A from calculus also. Hopefully you saw both. So that's E to the minus A times E to the A is 1. All these probabilities add to 1. So that makes us feel better about our math.